Okay, so I recently made a couple of videos talking about Omega and comparing Rolex and Omega, and I had a surprising flurry of commenters saying things along the lines of, Rolex? Omega's not even better than Tudor. So my first thoughts about these comments were, are you, are you crazy? Because it just seems so obvious to me that Omega watches are a more elevated, finished product than Tudor. If you hold an Omega Seamaster in one hand, their entry-level sports watch, and a Tudor Black Bay 58 in the other, there's no competition. The Omega is just another level of watchmaking. But the more I thought about these comments, I, I don't know why they stuck with me so long, but they were just low-key simmering within me. <laughs> but I thought, you know, Tudor still is delivering a lot. So let's talk about it. Is Tudor delivering better watches than Omega? If you're new here, hi, my name is Brittany. And on this channel, we just talk about watches in a hopefully not pretentious and joyful way. Today, we're talking about two brands that I immensely love and respect, Tudor and Omega. Now let's get my biases out in the open here. I am a Tudor fangirl through and through. I own two Tudor watches and I will forever have a soft spot for them. I believe Tudor is the side of the Hans Vilsdorf Foundation that is actually making true tool watches, while Rolex seems to be playing a different game nowadays. And Tudor is being pretty aggressive for how much watch they offer at the price point. I don't know if you guys do this too, or if this is just a me thing, but Tudor has become the brand through which I measure all other things through. Like if I'm looking into buying from another watch brand, I always think, oh, yikes, that that's two Tudors worth. That costs two Tudors. And I don't think you're getting two Tudors worth of watch there. <laughs> I really, I just need to get out more. God. Now for my Omega biases, I was never a big Omega person. I understand why people love them so much and it's no disrespect to you if you love Omega. They just didn't really do it for me. But I've now had a few Omegas in for review and my mind has changed. I've had a vintage Speedmaster in to review, a new vintage Seamaster Diver 300 225450, the CK859, the Omega Planet Ocean, and a modern Seamaster Diver 300. And the more I've spent proper hands-on time with Omega watches, the more I've found myself being won over to the brand. So let's answer the question at hand. Is Tudor better than Omega? So this is a question I've been mulling over for a few weeks now, and ultimately, nah, nah, I don't think Tudor is better than Omega. I don't think it's fair to pool Omega in the same category as Tudor, but here's why I think people are doing it. Because of how ambitious Tudor is and how much watch they're delivering at the price point. Looking at a watch I don't talk about as much, but it probably is the best value diver on the market, the Pelagus. The classic Pelagus is an insane value proposition. For £4,100, you're getting a titanium case and bracelet, 500 meters of water resistance, a 9 o'clock helium escape valve, tucked away nicely. Hmm. <laughs> It has the in-house manufacturer caliber MT5612, cost certified movement, giving you 70 hours of power reserve, a smart clasp system with a diver's extension, and a complimentary rubber strap. If you're looking for a beefy, heavy hitting, 42 millimeter tool watch, it's impossible not to entertain the Pelagus. And if you were to compare it to the Omega Seamaster Diver 300, you're kind of getting a better watch depending on how you measure things. The Seamaster has far less water resistance, a less expensive material in stainless steel, and the device of helium escape valve. Both watch movements are cost certified. Omega pulls ahead with the coaxial escapement, and the Tudor costs about 1,500 pounds less than the Omega. Pound for pound, I'd have to say with the Tudor, you're getting more watch for your money. But here's the problem for me. A watch is so much more than just the sum of its parts. Measuring the quality of a watch is so much more nuanced than reading the specification sheet and computing what each watch can do. Which leads me to why I still don't think we can say that Tudor is better than Omega. For me, it's all about the finishing. This is where Omega pulls ahead. 
As I said in the beginning of the video, if you hold a Tudor Black Bay 58 in your left hand and an Omega Seamaster Diver 300 in your right, there is a pronounced elevation and elegance to the Diver 300. You can read the specification sheets all day long, but getting the watches in hand, feeling the quality, seeing the case construction, the Omega is just elegant. I said this in my review of the Seamaster Diver 300, the Seamaster is the most interesting dive watch I've ever seen. And I'm not being hyperbolic. It is beautiful, well thought out, and it doesn't look like anything else. The design almost feels like water or something fluid with the lyre lugs floating into the case, the scalloped bezel and the waved dial. Everything about it feels beautiful and well thought through. That level of detail and finishing just isn't in the Tudor divers. The Tudor Black Bays, and more specifically the Black Bay 54, is still my dive watch of choice, but it is far more pared back. Less frills, more simple, and for many people, like me, that's a feature, not a fault. I like the Black Bay 58 and Black Bay 54 because they feel less luxury and more tooly. And this whole video so far has just been looking at the dive watch offerings of these brands. But the statement, Tudor is better than Omega, has to encompass their entire catalogs. And that is just silliness. That's a silly thing to say. Omega has ventured into territories I don't think Tudor will ever venture into because of the limitations that will always be around them, being the little sibling of Rolex. Omega has made tourbillons, chime watches, some very ambitious gem setting. Even if we put that to the side and just comparing other watches in their catalogs. The Aquaterra to the Black Bay 41, the Speedmaster to the Black Bay Chrono. Omega almost always wins in every category, in my humble opinion. I don't think comparing Omega to Tudor is a more fair comparison than, say, Omega and Rolex. None of this is to say Tudor isn't great. Tudor is blimmin' amazing! I'm wearing my favorite dive watch ever, right now. They're creating the tool watches of choice. I don't think they were ever really trying to be a rival to Omega, but I think they might be a larger threat to brands like Oris, the brands that are paddling in the lower to mid-tier luxury sports watch pool, but they don't have the resources of the Hans Vilsdorf Foundation. I think brands like these might be under more threat from Tudor. But I don't really know, I'm just riffing here. The Swiss luxury watch industry is infamously pretty discreet about what they're doing, what their thoughts are, so. This is just me thinking about my purchasing habits. Looking at the more business side of watches, Tudor has made a massive impact on the world of watches in a very short amount of time. Omega still has a meaningful lead over them, being the third highest selling Swiss watch brand of 2022 with an implied market share of 7.7%. But keep in mind, Tudor was only relaunched in 2009 and started dabbling in in-house movements in 2016. I don't think Tudor is meant to smoke out Omega, but if I was tag, I wouldn't be feeling great about this. In this video, I spent a lot of time analyzing data, comparing Tudor and Omega, looking at their revenue and units sold, but I've never been the type of person who's naturally good at numbers. And to make it even harder, Swiss sale figures measure billions in thousands of millions? Like this? Do you know how much it hurts my brain to think of 9.3 billion as 9,300 million? This stuff I've always found complicated, but there's actually a fun and interactive way to learn hard to understand concepts. And that's where today's fabulous video sponsor comes in, Brilliant. Brilliant is an online learning platform for lifelong learners and those who learn by doing. Brilliant helps you reach your learning goals, whatever your skill level, student or professional, young or old. I've been using brilliant.org to up my math and data skills using the Explore Data Visually course, which teaches you how to read critical data, analyze continuous variables, and make comparisons. All of which is helpful if you're, say, comparing watch brands or maybe launching merch soon, and you really need to figure out what you're doing and how you're doing it. Oh, I gotta get that sorted. But it's not limited to just data analysis. I've also been doing a foundational math course to brush off the cobwebs on my borderline embarrassing math skills. They've got courses in technology, logic, algorithms, computer science that teach in interactive ways that's not just sitting through boring lectures. It's hands-on lessons that you can do at your own pace. You can check out everything Brilliant has to offer for free for the next 30 days. 
Plus, the first 200 of you will get 20% off. Go check out the link in my description. They have a ton of courses and it's just fun to keep learning. So thank you Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Go check out that link for 20% off. And let's thank the Pope to your patrons. Bye guys.